Hello, this is a Foxy game where uh, White played uh, quite aggressive from the start and actually he overplayed a lot, so also got punished several times during the game, but I have the feeling he could have been punished more. So let's check it out. As we can see, White is aggressive from the start, very eager to fight right away instead of going for the empty corners. So this is a matter of style or taste. But in general, White should be just calm and wait for the commit to materialize later in the game. Anyway, this is the modern kick. And White should extend towards the top left side to expand the corner. Uh, black extends for a base, then White is sent to play away. Either approach the Sun Sun or invade the corner in the top left. But going down like this, um, it feels like playing endgame in Fuseki, so it's a bit slow. The attach is very good. And here Black could uh, turn first, Q16 threatening the cuts. If White defends, then Black gets a, a head, like in the actual game, but it's slightly better to have the thickness like this. Or back, I, I mean, the influence towards the center looks uh, more solid. <coughs> um... Before pushing here, white can play q16. Even if it's an empty triangle, it's, it's threatening the cuts. So black has to pull back and then white can push along. And later on, white can push in the middle and cut. That's why black had to play the turn right away. And black had another chance to play it, uh, q16 now, because white needs to protect again. So the thing is, if black plays q16 directly and white goes Atari on the outside, black will trade. Atari in the corner then catch the two stones. This way, uh, black is punishing white for the descended S16 too early. So here once again, uh, black can cover, then white needs to protect in the corner, then no B or jump. Either way, it's fine for black. Black is going for outside thickness. So here, white got the empty triangle, and now for black it's normal to play the no B, or the jump, but either way, there are still cutting points in that formation. So I see that Black decided just to extend and don't worry about the connection anymore. But for White, it's quite nice to go out, either like this or Hane, because it kind of hurts the top stones and the right stones in the meantime, and the corner is already safe. So instead of Black punishing White, White punish Black, which means that uh, overplays unpunished. Uh, seem to be great as Suji's, and for white it worked fine. I mean, white went down S16, which was supposed to be a bad move, but somehow black didn't take advantage uh, in the local fight. Uh, instead of this schema to extend up, black can extend to space jump at K17, and it narrows the gap in the top, and in the meantime it's more territorial. <coughs> Anyway, not a bad idea to, to do something with the three stones. Also, uh, K16 is an option. So just extend and don't leave them behind. Then white comes inside. Now in this position, black can just cover to connect the, the line on the, on the fourth line. White will protect under either like this or like this or jump out. I mean, push again and extend. But it doesn't matter, black is connecting his stones and set up a wall. So this should be a little better for black. This kind of move uh, seems a bit thin. Black is trying to connect his stones, but he doesn't put enough pressure on R13. And also leaves some cutting points. So when white simply connects, then white can think about attach uh, on the mark stones and will cut black stones later on. Good idea to play Tanuki. So just treat these stones lightly in the top right corner and go for the most open sides on the board. This kick is questionable, White should simply defend the corner. With this move, uh, White is actually helping Black more than he helps himself. And going down is not so great. Again, he should protect the corner, Black extends for a base, and now White has the freedom to play wherever he wants. When White goes down, instead of extending R6, Black should play where White was supposed to play. So R6. If White protects the corner, Black comes out, and again, black has nice potential towards the middle. <coughs> so black simply went down, uh, and in this case, white can extend on the side, then black again needs to make a base, but having this exchange on the board is very difficult to invade Sun Sun anymore. So in general, 
um, White doesn't have this move on the second line, just defends the corner, and later on, Black can invade Sansan. And if White plays down, it means he really wants to make sure the corner is safe, but then it's good to come from the right side to make it smaller. So when White blocks S5 or S4, the corner is going to be uh, a little smaller than it happens uh, in general. So Black blocked, White defends, even larger. Uh, that's a little bit greedy because later on black can still play a move like r5 and crawl this way uh, black can live in the corner or simply capture the stone on the outside and keep center so there's still edge in the corner when white plays the overstretch on gamer instead of gamer gamer would be safer and black still extends on the bottom side uh, on the bottom, black can extend high because black has a very strong position after the block at O2, and it's also a good relationship with the uh, low stone at C3. Playing low, it feels that uh, black just wants territory, but somehow it became a little flat on the bottom side. I mean, after white will press down on the sun sun, it doesn't seem that black is going to build too much on the bottom area. <clears throat> so white comes between uh, those stones on the right side but this seems a little bit soft there are uh, there's a lot of open space on the left side where white should try to develop split here for example and then approach the corner then go in the top so like this white gets to, to have stones all over the board playing here it feels like a shy way to come into the center anyway black doesn't care about the stones in the top right once black uh, tenuki earlier this is a good move looks nice with the k3 extension now white plays another desperate invasion instead of going in the open spaces so he can have room to extend uh, this is a bit too aggressive now when crosscut is played black could just atari uh, when white goes down black will uh, go along on the second line atari connect and the two stones are captured if white descends here, this will uh, threaten the squeeze, so black can block it, and then white needs to protect against the cutting points, and black will take away the base. So black keeps the territory on the left side, and uh, starts chasing the bottom group. Playing here, it feels like it's going to give white some uh, more room to maneuver. So Atari first, and then connect. Now here white can connect at E2, which threatens the same thing to uh, go down at b4 uh, black will turn black can also play atari once then black needs to capture that stone it can be a net or it can be atari either way anyway uh, black should play something and the net is good because it gives nice eye shape and then white has to come out either with atari or kema white is very low and he doesn't have a base <clears throat> so the same thing happened uh, white connected threatening to capture it before but black has to turn in the corner because this way uh, it keeps d3 without a base and anyway when black goes into the corner uh, black expands his liberties which means when white honey black can still catch this stone like this or in a net and if white goes down uh, white has three liberties black has three liberties so black will still capture faster this way and atari and take so white needs to extend for a base there's a lot more pressure on white if black turns at b2 so playing here uh, this leaves later b2 for white so white can extend and when black tries to attack severe white has a uh, room to expand his eye space more uh, actually black shouldn't play anything anymore in this area it's not so easy to uh, kill this group it can be kept or came under came on top but better just leave it and play for example c14 which is a big point because it prevents the sun's invasion and it also prevents the the approach on on the corner <clears throat> so white has to leave somehow uh that's a bit too painful first of all he doesn't need to play here i mean he can push out if black ever pushes here white blocks and that's it uh, now there's a cutting point at k4 so black has to pay attention and come back 
This is a very uh, submissive defense. Yeah, there's a cutting point here, but for black right now, a jump like p7 is an option. So when white cuts, Atari and extend. Black is safe on the bottom, and white just creates another heavy group running into the middle. And the proper defense is still l5. So when white cuts, there's Atari, 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 and Atari all the way. This one is still okay. It's, I mean, it's possible and fine. But later on, when white jumps in the middle, white can approach like this, threatening the cut. If white blocks, uh, if black connects this way, white has another 4c move. But the other Kima doesn't leave so many 4c moves around it. So white turns, black makes shape, and white is pretty much out. Here, black can surround the group. But anyway, this group will leave. There's a lot of space and White can always bend into the corner. So wedge, and this way the group is actually out into the middle. So let's see what black could do better. Ah, black can actually push. And then if white Hane, black will block, white Nobi, <coughs> and then play a connection. For example, this one. But still, this is Gote, and anyway, white was alive. So why play more moves in this area? It's much bigger to play in the top left. So black is thick and extending here, it's pretty big actually. Okay, make some tiger mount. Jump here uh, kind of helps the stones on the right and in the top, but it's still more practical to play moves like F17 or G17 in order to connect the stones from the middle to the corner and then hope for some territory this way. Playing a jump in the center, uh, when white comes in the top, black has to pincer, and then it's a little bit over concentrated. White can double approach, then we have this basic joseki, and in the end, when we look at the jump, it's just a neutral point in the middle, instead of taking more territory or potential. But in the meantime, this move is also kind of helping the stones on the right, so it serves for that kind of purpose. So white separates, then black fixes against the cut. That's fine. This is also good. Now here black can think about the pincer to go for a big left side. If white goes in the corner, just separate, take a lot of profit on the left side, because anyway in the top there was not so much to fight for. But let's see the other Joseki. So if black blocks here, Black goes for the Moya in the top. That's also playable actually. Not so much on the left side, but trying to make the box in the top. So, <clears throat> a kick is possible too. Because white uh, has to extend either to space jump high or low, and this is over concentrate. Yeah, in this case, the kick is an option. The kick is not so great when white is going to extend all the way, but in this case, when black has the stone at D9, for white is not so great to extend C10. Because this will end up over concentrated on the left side anyway. And then black builds a lot. The turn in the top is big. Or play something on the right side. Like this R5 invasion. <clears throat> so black simply double up. Now that kind of double up is played when black has some stones around G17 or J17, J16. Uh, this L16 is quite far away. So for white it's easy to make a base and then also invade the top side. Now normally black needs another move in the top to make uh, c16 uh, be more valuable. But then white will slide on the left. When black defends the left, white can enter the top and now the d16 group is just heavy. So that double up of c16 wasn't the greatest choice. Now for white, yeah, sorry for black, it's more interesting to play a keima in order to put more pressure on the two stones. If white simply blocks, then black has time to extend in the top to space jump high or Ogema. And this block 1 2 on the left side prevents the slide at B9. And if white doesn't do anything, I mean doesn't react on the left side but invades the top somehow, then black is happy to push and take away the base. Now white will be on the run, black can jump between the groups and never know, something might die. 
So playing just here, this prevents white slide, but it doesn't really have a follow up. It's more a defense, but without looking to to be more active. So with the Kema, there's something to continue on the left side, which is B11. And many times with the Kema, white will answer. And in this case, the block was already centered for black compared to uh, this kind of move, which is complete god. White doesn't have to double up here. He can do that anytime. Just enter the top side. So this move, it's not necessarily centered because if uh, black plays away, white will push, black connects, and that's pretty much it. And if white plays this move, black can block. If white tries to connect, cut, attack, go out, and then capture the stones. So black, it's all connected either way. This move, uh, it's pretty good because it puts pressure on a uh, white's group and tries to build a box in the top. So white has to go out somehow. It's fine. Still some pressure on the group. And the proper way for white to live is this kind of move for eye shape. But yeah, no is good too, because when black comes inside, white will honey in the corner, then jump out in the middle. So it's fine. Now black can actually uh, build a lot in the top by playing another move, either h16 or try to maximize by blocking n18 or at least l18. So try to set up the box. Uh, this game is not too bad, threatening to enter the right side, but when white blocks, black has to no be. So white keeps the right side and white can try some invasion in the top now. Because he's pretty much behind. And if this invasion works, uh, black stones in the middle will just become neutral points. So maybe p6 is more like a thank you move. Because anyway, black had the option to invade here. So all game are kind of invasion. Normally, black should just block this. If white goes down, Black can block again, and it feels like more pressure on white's group. Like this, white has uh, more room to expand his base. So push, yeah, that's very good. Pull back and cut. So this Kosumi actually can be cut. If black plays here, white will cut like that. Therefore, it looks like a fancy move, but it's better to play the block solid and then turn or block again to keep the the base under attack at least black stones are connected and white will never link under so here white uh, escape quite nice black shouldn't play a hanging move because the connection under threatens a snapback so when black connects solid and white cuts black doesn't need to play n15 and if this order moves it's played then black can cut the stone in the center so this way, uh, when white cuts, black can cut in the middle, but then white captures three more stones in a snapback. But in fact, this trade is good. I mean, three stones are not such a big deal. There are six points, and then white profi uh, black also compensates by killing the marked stone in the center. White comes out, then black plays uh, uh, in the top. Black can actually jump and no be. <coughs> but it's a good idea to do something here in order to reinforce the top group. This can happen too. So came out to the left. Oh, that jump is a bit risky. Black can peep and then go down. Now the top three stones are separated. So white is on the run. Therefore, it's much easier for black to come out chasing the group. <clears throat> That's a good follow up from P6. Very nice idea to go down uh, if I didn't react somehow. And descend. Now, here, why should play the wedge? Give up a stone and try to compensate in the middle. But the corner is still very dangerous. So he went down and black got a nice shape. Mm, that's too much. Why should just slide? And reduce from the right, then jump in the middle. This might die inside, and it actually did. So black resists very well in the fight. 
Black doesn't need to play this Atari. <clears throat> so Black's problem here is the cutting point at N11. If Black plays Atari P9, White will connect here, then Black has to go back and connect on the side. If Black goes Atari here, White connects like this, and again there are some problems with the cutting points. So these two moves are not interesting for Black, none of those. Because whichever Black plays, uh, White will play the other one, and vice versa. I mean, if Black simply connects on the outside, well, when White plays here, Black connects only doesn't allow the connection under, and in fact, P9, it's a useless move, it's a neutral point, nobody wants to take that. So, right now, Black should just protect, and if White tries to link under, there is no way, and also not enough space to make twice, and when White plays something like this, Black plays a key mass, surrounds everything, and White was supposed to resign already. So this Atari, it's really uh, giving White some uh, hope, but it's still tough for White, White doesn't have enough liberties. Black even had time to connect that stone. Yeah, the group is still trapped inside. But it's just unnecessary for Black to take a Gote at 08. I mean, when uh, Black plays this Nobi 08 and allows the cut, Black will be forced at the end to play many moves inside. So 08 is minus one point, but actually even more because black needs to capture the group when all the neutral points are filled therefore black should play on the outside to prevent the cut and well without this exchange just connect on the outside and 08 just becomes uh, black's territory because the group will die anyway so these are the kind of mistakes that one should have should get rid of so capture uh the take the capture here is not necessary so white's push is threatening to take away liberties and so on but actually it's a complete bluff so black and peep in the middle and play other moves to keep the top safe and if white comes out black will just atari if atari take nothing happens so capture then we proceed with some more end game very good to hunt and capture more stones block and here white was supposed to connect otherwise there's a cut in order to capture a few more stones uh, it's better to take right away or talk, 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 talk. yeah in fact it doesn't matter much but less uh, cotrets for later now the cut very good so if white plays here, black captures, white needs to come back, black takes three, three more stones. And if white connects, black captures the three in the top and it's a disaster. If Atari here and Atari again, this is also dangerous. Go fight, but it's good enough to push and cut. So this stage, uh, white gave up. Well, overall, uh, it felt that black was just reacting to white's moves. And somehow, white keep pushing and overplaying, but... He, he died by his own sword somehow. So, very good game for Black. But with a few uh, small unforced errors, as I like to call them, like uh, that Kosumi uh, allowing the snapback then come back here, then this Atari Q10, which is unnecessary because it just forces 08 and anyway the group was dying, then capture B4 instead of playing B2 first to put more pressure on the bottom. Enjoy the review and keep punishing them.